Welcome back to another episode of Tractor Roy. My name is Trent, and today we're working on one of the killer bees. This is the first time the Farmall Bee has been on the channel other than when we picked it up. So on this one today, we kind of got a little involved project with it. Uh, there's a casting plug, a freeze plug in the black back right here that's popped out. So when you fill it full antifreeze, it all drains out. Um, what probably happened is he either filled it full of water and let it sit over the winter, or it was just old coolant. Um, anyways, uh, when I filled it up, it looked like it was only leaking back here. I mean, I don't see any other cracks in the block anywhere and the oil, it doesn't look like any water's gotten in the oil. So I think we can just split this thing, which, you know, whatever, I guess kind of is what it is, but we'll split this, throw that new freeze plug in there. Um, the clutch, when you go to push it down too far, these bolts stick out on the clutch. I don't know what the deal is with it, but that, uh, not the throw out bearing, but the disengagement linkage the little raw or the whatever the disengagement for the clutch is it rubs against those bolts as that clutch is spinning around so you can't push it in far enough to disengage the clutch so you have to grind it a little bit to get into gears and since we're in there we may as well fix that uh what else do i have to do oh the final drives they're noisy uh it looks like they've been leaking i'm hoping that i can just throw some really thick gear oil some like i don't know 120 or 140 weight if i can find it or like just some 98 with some lucas in there uh, I do have, I did buy another tractor. I bought a Super A parts for uh, $25. It's missing like, I think it still has a gas tank, but it's missing the hood, the grill, but it has all the running gear to it. Uh, what's cracked? The block is cracked. The steering linkage is cracked, but the finals are good and the torque tube is good. So this one's a 1940. It doesn't have a spot for an electric start on it. And this thing fires up great. But for $25, I now have that Super A that has an electric starter, uh, a spot for an electric starter. So down the road, I might throw this in. Uh, this torque tube has been brazed back here. And then that final drive on that side, the housing has been brazed also. Uh, so the finals are good on that Super A. So I'll just have extra parts for this. Uh, the A's and Super A's and B's, most of the stuff is, uh, most of the stuff swaps out between the two. Uh, like the difference between the Farmall A and the Farmall B. Farmall A, the uh, final drive housing just bolts right to the side of the transmission. So then it's only this wide. The B, this side or this axle is the same as this. They just flip it around. So that's the only difference. So on that Super A, I can take the casting from this side, put it onto this side if I need to. And the finals work for the same. Uh, this, the PTO doesn't work. I'm assuming that there's just some linkage in here. In my pile of parts, I actually found what I think is a leakage to it. So whatever the case, that Super A has a good PTO. So I can take this part, grab whatever pieces I need to get this PTO working. I don't know if I'm ever gonna use the PTO on it, but it'd be nice to have. Ooh, what else? Uh, on the Bs, the draw bars are a lot wider than the A, obviously because of the stance. You know, the A's are only this big. The A's are meant as a single row crop tractor. The bees are meant as a two-row tractor. <sighs> Otherwise, yeah, they're all the same across the across the board. None of the bees, maybe, maybe the very late ones, had options for hydraulic. Uh, there's a little boss at the front of the engine that would mount the hydraulic pump on, but pretty much none of the bees had any hydraulics on them. The A's didn't either. Uh, the Super A's is when they started getting hydraulics, and that bolts on right here, and then the battery goes here, and then you've also got that dashboard that goes here. On that Super A, I have all those parts, but the engine is bad, and this engine doesn't have that boss for hydraulics. But I don't know. I guess down the road, if I ever found a Super A block, I could throw it on here and get hydraulics on my, my B, make it a Super B. As far as the engine goes, this doesn't need any work done to it. It just takes off. And then we're good. But since it doesn't have any antifreeze because of that plug in the block, I can't run it for very long. I can kind of move it around like I just moved it in. I loaded it up on a trailer and then just moved it into the shop, but I can't do much more than that right now. So another thing that's pretty unique about this bee, the very early, early ones, uh, 39 and 40, because this one's a 1940, have this cable disconnect or the cable magneto kill switch. It actuates it like that. A lot of people didn't like these. I don't really know why. I mean, this one's kind of goofy. I need... I need some help, like I need to shim that because it doesn't get tight enough here. But 
people didn't like this and they switched to that wire kill switch where you'd take that wire and it would go to ground and then kill the magneto that way. But this one still works, as you can tell. I mean, needs some help, but it works. So to split this, I got a couple of things I got to take off. Obviously muffler, the air cleaner top. Wow, that's actually really loose. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't blown off, but I do have a box of parts that has more of these if that ever happens. So muffler, air cleaner top, I'm going to pop the hood off. I got to take the gas tank off. I have to take the steering shaft off. Uh, the gas tank support bracket spans the engine to the torque tube here. And then I have to take off what? That magneto kill switch. I have to take off the throttle rod that runs up to the governor. Uh, oh, that's also really loose too. See, now's a good time to just go through it because I really am not sure what I have, but I have it. Take off that choke rod. Uh, that's really all there is to this. Well, I mean, by this evening, I can get ready to split this thing. When I go to split this, I think I'm going to use either these or these with one of those boat trailer jacks because this is a wide rear end because it's a B. I think I can just get that one spot and it should, I mean, it'll stay stable enough. The front is what I'm concerned about. I could run it off the rafters here, but I don't really know if I want to do that. So I'm probably going to end up just building a, some sort of a mount to go onto my transmission jack. I'll probably just like stick it up against the oil pan here. I don't really know yet. I don't have a uh, cherry picker, so I can't just, a lot of guys, it seems like from what I've read, we'll just chain it up and then pick it up with the cherry picker, but I don't have one. So anyways, I'm gonna start pulling some of this stuff off. Uh, I don't have to worry about draining the coolant or anything because I don't have any coolant in it. Oh yeah, I forgot. So when we went out there, all the ones that had been painted like this one had tags of what was going on with them as, as long as they knew what was going on. So this one says early B, no electric, pretty obvious. <laughs> bad clutch. Uh, the clutch is good. It's just those bolts that if you push the clutch in too far, then it starts rubbing against those bolts. Engine sounds good. Finals are noisy. Uh, I'm hoping that it's just because the oil leaked out because there's definitely some oil, oil and dirt sticking to it that have leaked out. Oh, so another cool thing the guys do with these bees, because this axle over here is just this axle spun around has all the mounting bolts so you can add a second seat on here so with that super a i think it's missing the seat pan but it does have the foot uh, footrest and the brackets so i can just add in another seat right here i just I just have to find a pan for it and i'm kind of excited for that because then i can take my kids out raking or in parades and whatnot um and that kind of reminds me this tractor i'm trying to get done by the time we have our local parade I want to take this one into the parade. We're going to take this B, that C, the 240. I just got my 70 fixed, so maybe I can take that one. And then I've got a John Deere B also that I just need to work on the carburetor and maybe tinker with the Magneto, clean some stuff up, get rid of some rust. And I think we've got enough people to drive these things. But, yeah. The guy that we get most of the tractors from and get all these parts, uh, not this one, but like that Super A came from him. His dad had a 50, 60, and 70 that are all matching wide fronts. And I think he's going to take those into that parade too. And those look pretty sweet. But, so I figured, why not join him with the bees? Ooh, this hood's seen better days. It didn't really get much uh, much love when it got painted. So, I've got a big list of tractors that I want to keep an eye out for that I'd like to own at some point in the future. Uh, now, for the Farmall Letter Series, I need a A and a Cub, and I guess a C, but my father-in-law's got a C, so really just an A and a Cub. And then I'd have the full letter series of Farmall. Uh, another one would be an Alice Chalmers B. And I've got those two Alice Chalmers WD-45s. Then my father-in-law's got that D-17. But the Alice Chalmers B, then I could just have like a flock of bees. 
Alice Chalmers bee, John Deere bee, Farmall bee, and I'm not really sure what other tractor manufacturers made bees, but I'd really like to know. Have a whole flock of bees that go flying around. Okay, I think that's it. That's all I need to split it right here. Not bad. I'm sure that was way easier yeah, than a modern setup. Tractor. I don't have tools for this and I don't really have time to make like a fancy setup. So I got ourselves a little boat trailer jack with a wheel attached to where the cultivators mount on this torque tube. Um, we got straps and chains to lift it up, uh, lifting it from the ceiling. We've also got a transmission jack underneath here. 
So hopefully that thing doesn't rock back and it'll make it a little easier to put back together when we're done. Yeah, we got five bolts left to split this thing. We'll see if I can get it done. So there's a couple of alignment dowels that are gonna be holding this. Even when I take all these bolts out, these alignment dowels are gonna be holding everything together still. So I'm probably gonna have to use a little pry bar to separate these two halves. I'm not really worried about getting it apart. It's going back together easily than I'm worried about. I suppose worst case, I can just take this front bolster off, stick the engine on and then the bolster, but ugh. I'd love to not have to do that. This is going to be so bad to put back together. <laughs> I just get that feeling. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I can just use the old really long bolt trick. Make a little pilot that sticks out six, eight inches. Whatever the longest the hardware store has. And my wheel's not rolling on this cardboard. Oh well. Oh yeah, there's our issue. Okay, I'll bring you in so you can see. Okay, as far as our leak, that's it. That's the back of that casting plug and it is rotten on the back of that thing. No bueno. So this one should be the back, oh, sorry. So this one should be the back of the cam and then this one's the casting plug for the water jacket. That's the one that we gotta replace. This one, there's no uh, water behind it it would just be oil. So once we get this clutch and flywheel off, we'll take a look. Oh, what is it that's rubbing? Oh, right here. These bolt heads. Yep. So right there, when you push this in, this this is the actuator from your clutch pedal that pushes up against the throwout bearing. And it catches on the heads of these bolts. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna fix that. So, hmm. But I gotta get this clutch off and there should be four bolts that hold on this flywheel. Gotta pull that off, that way I can get to that. And then I'll have to clean up this, go to town, get a new freeze plug for it or casting plug for it and then throw it all back together. Okay, these ones, what I'm gonna try and do is back off fairly evenly at the beginning of this because these things are under some pressure, spring pressure against the flywheel. So it's not like you wanna back it all off at once. Otherwise it'll warp your disc here. Oh, the bummer part is I have a, an H clutch. I don't have another B clutch. Oh, I don't have an ABC clutch. I only have an H clutch. We'll have to see what kind of shape this is in. We got that Super A. I still have to go pick up for parts. Now would be a fantastic time to swap out this torque tube. But I don't have it. I don't want to try and get this thing going in the parade. So I'll actually probably save that for a winter project because I'm going to use this raking hay this year. I'm kind of excited about it. Ah, there goes the clutch. Check out the pressure plate. A little rusty. There's actually Actually not that bad. How's our clutch? Oh. Rusty, but still a lot of life left. Let me guess, fold over locks. Sure are. Okay, so now I gotta bend these fold over locks down and then take off this flywheel. Uh, this one's machined for a ring gear, as you can see. But since this torque tube doesn't have a, a block out for an electric starter, uh, that's why it doesn't have a ring gear. Um, yeah, like I said, with that super A, I'll throw everything on, but don't have it right now. So it doesn't help me. And then it wouldn't be painted all red like the rest of this thing is. Oh! 
Oh, that's heavy. I mean, not that bad. I can hold it with one hand. Yeah, this one's still nice and shiny. This one, obviously, is no good anymore. Got a nice hole. So I'm just going to do what I can to pick away at this thing. Shoot, that's going to suck. Well, yeah, that was our issue. Now, get the joy of trying to clean out all this gunk. I guess it's not the end of the world. I'll just clean up the best that I can and then uh, fill it full of clean water, run it, drain it, fill it full of clean water, run it, drain it. It's not like I can take this engine out right now. Gosh. There's nothing that you can hurt sticking this thing inside of this water jacket. It's just, you know, an empty a casting. There's nothing else. Like, you know, this doesn't reach the, wow, it doesn't reach anything important in here. Yeah, this one still looks good. Then again, it doesn't have water up against it. So, uh, water, rust stuff, pretty obviously. Um, coolant has some anti-corrosion properties. So if this had been filled with water, or if this had been filled with coolant, it probably wouldn't have rusted out like that. But since it was filled with water, well, I'm gonna say it was filled with water because it rusted like that. The cooling passage probably ends right here at the bottom of this jacket with them. Cause I'm trying to clean out right through here. This is the lowest part of the block because it comes out right there. So lowest part of the block. So all this sludge is probably collecting right here. And the rest of it probably going to be, I wouldn't say okay, maybe mediocre. But boy, I wish I could flush this out. We use this for winterizing the boat. Just a five gallon bucket with a spigot on the end. Fill this full of water, I should just be able to pretty controlled, fill up the radiator, and it ought to wash all that stuff out. Until I totally miss. It's not gonna work. So much for that. Here I am, I'm making the shop a mess again. But I can kind of pre-fill the cooling system to make sure it's gonna seal up before I stick this whole thing back together. Okay, well, I can't really rinse the block out, uh, but I got this chipped out pretty good. So I'm going to run to town and get the freeze plug for this. This is just regular off the shelf, off the shelf casting plug. Nothing special to it. And I'll probably just take like some gasket sealer, go around the inside of this when I stick that plug in there. Hopefully I can seal it up. Think note to self with the, so this is an ABC engine. This is a C123. It's used in the A's, A's B's and C's. No, a 113. And then a C123 is used in like, I know the 240. And it might be in the supers. But anyways, anytime that we have any of these apart, I don't know how many more we're going to split. But regardless of this, if this is bad or not, we should swap this out. It's only a couple of bucks for the part. And we don't have to do this. Split the tractor just to <laughs> fix, fix a rusted freeze plug. It is so close. Yeah, it did. Sweet. So I'm going to take a punch and seat this thing. 
Make sure it's all the way back there. Boy, this one's not going to leak. This thing's super tight. Okay, and how these freeze plugs work is once they're seated, you kind of So they start out con convex and when you concave them, it spreads out. See anything oozing out? Oh, that's better. Yep. Sweet. Except somebody's going to come back in here and this says 2 and 16th when really it's a 2 inch. So <laughs> me in 50 years, I'm going to be splitting this thing back apart going, what is going on here? Whoops, forgot to hit record. So I've got my flywheel stuck back on here. I use the alignment dowel to get it oriented where it needs to. Got the bolts with the fold over locks going on here. Just gonna snug these up. So now you wanna go in a cross pattern. It's also a good idea, this is a magneto, so I have a coil wire unhooked. It goes to the, distrib or the distribution cap. Because this thing starts so easily that uh, even when it's sitting here, with what little, little fuel is left in the bowl, I could probably start this thing by tightening these bolts too fast. Okay, after that star pattern, then I'm just going to snug them up the rest of the way. I'm also going to stop them so there's a flat with our fold over lock. Might make life a little easier. Okay. Now I'm going to fold our locks. So this guy, the guy I got it from, put this clutch in backwards. So there's two sides to this thing. Can you tell? Yeah, so this side bumps out. This side's pretty much flat. Flat side goes towards the engine, flywheel side, and then that pressure plate kind of goes around this. So if you have this end backwards, so the bump out is towards the flywheel, this clutch actually doesn't sit all the way on there. Okay. Now I gotta go get that pressure plate. I also don't have an alignment tool. Okay, flat side towards the engine. Pressure plate sits over the top here. I'm going to start a couple of these bolts. Get everything lined up. And then I'll start tightening down in that same star pattern. I'm going to just tighten these up until they're even across all three of them. Between that clutch being apparently backwards in these one of these was way off it's very very possible that uh that was part of our issue okay this is ready to go back together i lost my help uh, I don't know if I can do this by myself, but we're going to try. Because why not? It's fun. That and I'm freaking excited to drive this thing. Actually drive it. There's just been like tootling, well, as long as it takes to warm the engine up, because I've been kind of worried about it, and I don't want to seize it.
Now just to be clear, this one right here, I wasn't putting any pressure on it, trying to pull it together. I was trying to use it to align it better. Because it's a great way to break the casting or some of your clutch stuff. Like now, there's like no effort on me putting these things in. I'm just using these bolts to slowly pull this together so I don't have to keep rocking it by hand. Voila! Okay, reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. Time to start throwing this thing back together. There shouldn't be anything too particular on putting it back together. Uh, it's not like I need to adjust anything because I just took it off, so I should just be able to bolt it back on. I am going to turn it so it's uh, straight again, because why not? So we'll go ahead and start throwing stuff back on, probably starting with, actually I'm going to start with this mag wire, because I got one more bell housing bolt. Okay, now so I can work on the final drives and narrow up the stance, I'll take the tires off. Oh. Yeah, there's some sludge and stuff for sure. Oh, I bet you it's been a while since that was changed.
Yeah, there's no broken or chipped teeth. Oh, that's gross. Look at that. Well, that's not supposed to be that color. Oh. What? Oh, watch out. Just look at all this gunk coming out, dude. Well, I don't feel any hard parts, at least. Oh. Oh, my thing. <laughs> Look at that, G. Oh, I see a alligator. Oh, my. I've heard the guys will take diesel, run it in there for a while. You know, maybe I'll run down the road with it full of diesel, and then it really cleans everything up. Okay, so to try and clean this thing up, I'm going to pour a gallon of diesel in here. See if I can get it to break up all that sludge. Drive it around for a little bit, and then I'll uh, turn it back out and put some fresh 90 weight in there. This is where you fill up your gas tank, right? Okay, and I'm gonna fill the finals right here with fresh 90 weight, and then I'll meet you back here. My camera battery's about to die. Bum, 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 No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't have any sound on this, so yay me. So we're gonna have a lackluster ending to this video. Uh, this farm will be went back together pretty well. Uh, after I ran that thing down the road with full of diesel, drain it all back out. Fill the full of fresh 90 weight, and I think we're going to be good to go. I am going to add some Lucas uh, oil stabilizer into those finals because it's still pretty dang noisy. If you're not subscribed, make sure to do that now. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this thing. Throw a comment down below. Let me know how I'm doing, areas to improve, what you liked, all that good stuff. Uh, we should be seeing more of this thing, especially come hang season. I think it'll be a fun raking tractor. I'm kind of excited to drive this little thing. So thanks for watching Tractor Roy. Hope I'll catch you on the next one.